Now let's move on to motion graphics. And specifically, we're going to take a look at some new MASH nodes in Maya 2018. Now the first one we're going to look at is a dynamics node that uses Maya's bullet physics to create dynamic simulations. So we're going to create a really simple simulation using this sphere. So before we do anything, I'm going to go ahead and select this box here at the bottom. And I already have this on a layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just hide that layer by clicking on the V. Now let's go ahead and select this sphere and create a mesh network. So I'm going to go into mesh, create mesh network, and then select my options here. And then for distribution type, I want grid, and then I want geometry type to be mesh. So let's go ahead and do apply and close. What it does is it creates a grid of these spheres here on the ground plane. So if we go into our attribute editor, we can take a look at that. We can look at the mesh distribute node here. And as you can see, it's a grid. And I want to go ahead and turn up the grid Y to three. So I want to kind of make this into a cube of spheres. Now, what I want to do is drop these on the ground. So one of the first things I want to do is lift them up so that they will fall. So I'm going to go back over to my mesh tab or my mesh node here. And let's just do a quick offset. So I'm going to click on offset. We're just going to add an offset node. And all this does is it just moves everything in a particular direction. So I'm going to go ahead and offset position by 12 units in Y. And so now we have these above the ground. And once we do, we can now drop them on the ground. Let's go into our outliner here because I want to show you what happens when we do this. So I'm going to go ahead and select my mesh node here. And then we're creating a dynamics node. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and add dynamics node. Now watch what happens. We get a mesh bullet here. So this is where some of our simulation is going to happen. This is for the environment. And then we also have a dynamics node here in the mesh node. So we really have two places where we control it. The objects that are actually dynamically moving are in the mesh dynamics node. And then the actual environment is in the bullet node. So let's go ahead and just keep this at the defaults. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my timeline up to, say, 200 so we can see everything. And let's just go ahead and play and see what happens. And as you can see, it falls down and basically hits the ground. Now, the ground is way lower than I had expected it. I actually want it at the grid, at the ground plane. So we can change this by going into the mash bullet node. So I'm going to rewind this and then select mash bullet one. And if we scroll down here, you'll see that we have solver settings. And so this is how we solve this simulation. And then under ground, we can turn ground on or off. And notice how this object kind of appears and disappears. Now we have a position on this. So right now it's positioned at negative 20 in Y. I'm going to go ahead and change that to zero. That brings it straight up to the ground plane. And now we can, again, bounce it. But we have to rewind it first to get that simulation going. So sometimes it might not work on that first one. So there we go. So now we've got these balls colliding into the ground plane where we want. And if we want to, we can go ahead and select this mesh node again and go into this mesh dynamics node. Now this controls the actual spheres. So one of the things I want is I want these to bounce a little bit more. So we have a control here for bounce. So I'm going to just dial that up. We can dial down things like friction. So I'm going to go ahead and dial down friction and rolling friction. And then under collision jitter, that's really how random those collisions are. I'm going to go ahead and turn that up just a little bit to maybe about 0.1 or so. And now when we play this, we get something like that. Now if I want, I can turn up my collision jitter a little bit more, give it a little bit more bounciness. And again, play it. Now, one of the things that's happening here is that these lower ones, they're not really bouncing as much as I'd like. But we can change a little bit by clicking on this bullet node here. And we can dial down the friction on the ground itself. So I'm going to go ahead and dial down that friction. 
and maybe make the ground a little bit more bouncy. And now let's go ahead and rewind it and play it and see what happens. Okay, so we're getting a pretty good simulation here. Okay, so now that we have this simulation, I want to now add in another object. So let's go ahead and add in that box as a collider. So I'm gonna go into my channel box here, go down to my layers panel here and just switch on that box. Now the box itself is going to be part of the environment. It's going to be a collider. So we need to connect that to the mesh bullet node. So I'm gonna go back into my attribute editor here, make sure I have the bullet node selected in my outliner. And if we scroll down here, you'll see we have collider objects. And if we place our mouse over that, you can see it accepts a mesh. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the ground and we're gonna make the collider object the box. So what we do is we go into our outliner, middle click on the box, drag it over that window and let go. So now that box is my collider. So if we rewind this, hit play, it now bounces and everything bounces into the box. And notice how the sides of the box are also a collider. So this is just a very simple example, but hopefully you can see that this is a very powerful tool that you can use in all sorts of visual effects and motion graphics situations.